right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Jotsna Ramachandran, who is all the way over in Chennai in India. How are you doing, Jotsna? I'm doing great, John. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Of course, just as a best-selling author, book publisher, TEDx speaker, and an international author success coach who helps uh, trainers, coaches, speakers, experts build a super profile by publishing a book. And one of the things we're going to talk about today is, okay, so a lot of people think, okay, yeah, I, I think I have a book in me, or I think I'd like to write a book, um, but they're not sure then when they kind of get into, they're not sure whether they should, whether they can or whatever. But you say there are, there are, some, there are three divine signals mm. to becoming an author. So I'm fascinated uh, in learning more about that, Jatsna. So what divine signals should I be looking for if it tells me I need to write another book? Uh, sure, John. So you are already an author, right? And yeah. I, uh, uh -huh. uh, but there are, that's actually a small major, a small minority of people yeah, know, who actually fulfill their dream and finish mm -hmm. the book. But most of them are still thinking about it. And every year they write it in their bucket list, but it never happens because they are actually waiting for a divine signal to tell them that, <laughs> hey, you go ahead and write your book, but they don't know how to identify that. So over my uh, experience in the last uh, five to six years of helping uh, hundreds of authors globally, I have noticed a pattern, which I thought I'll uh, share with you. So the first yes. uh, divine signal is when you see that a problem that you have overcome in your life is a repeated problem in other people's lives. You keep seeing that whatever you have gone through, it's not just a problem that has happened to you, but it's happening to people all over the world. It's everywhere around you, right? For example, if, for example, a person has gone through a very difficult divorce, but now he, mm -hmm. he or she is leading a happy life by overcoming all the challenges, and they now look around and all their friends are getting divorced, a lot of people are going through depression, and a lot of people need help. And so that could be a divine signal that, hey, you've done something successfully in life. You've, you've overcome a mess that you had in the past. And now it's your duty to go and help out all those people who are going through the same challenge. So that's yeah. divine signal number yeah. one. And, and just on that, it's always interesting because people say, uh, uh, like when people are, want to write, whether it's books or screenplays or whatever it is, uh, mm -hmm. they often say, uh, what, what, what should I write about? And, and the advice is always write about what you know. And what exactly. you just said there is if you, if you have gone through particular situations or whatever, and then you say, okay, this is something I, I know about, I could write about. And then you look around and you say, okay, well, this isn't a unique experience to me. Um, this is happening in a lot, of, a lot of places to a lot of people. Therefore, maybe I have an interesting insight to share. So I think that's a great piece of advice. Write about what you know, and then look around and see whether your experiences have some commonality with the experiences of others. Yeah, very true. And a lot of times people ignore this first signal thinking that, hey, I don't have a degree in that subject. Yeah. I don't uh, have a PhD and there are already such great books on this topic. But what people fail to recognize is uh, your experience is unique to you. And that mm. itself qualifies you to write a book. And not everybody is looking for the number one expert to teach them. They just want mm -hmm. the guidance of a person who is a couple of steps ahead of them, not hundred steps ahead of them, right? So you yeah. could be more relatable to somebody who is just going through that problem currently. I just want to underline, because something you mentioned there is just interesting, just reminded me of something. And you said, you may not have a degree in it. Uh, um, somebody I know, a friend of his uh, said, he has, two thing, he has two things on his wall in his office. One was his Harvard MBA. Mm -hmm. And the other was his first bankruptcy. And he, <laughs> he, he, always points, he always points to them and he says to people, which one do you think I learn more from? And wow. uh, it's always the bankruptcy. So to your Absolutely. point, you don't have to be an expert in it. You just have to have lived the experience and come out the other end. Right. Yeah. So let me just move on to the second divine signal. Mm -hmm. The second signal is when a lot of people just walk up to you and ask you for your advice on a particular topic. And it's not just one or two people, but many people are just asking you. So a lot of times we don't recognize that we are good at something. Uh, for example, I may think that I'm a very average parent, but when 
you know the parents of other kids they come come and ask me how come your children are uh, so well grounded they are well behaved and things like that that's when it's a, you know it's a signal that hey probably i could write a book on the subject because a lot of people around me feel that i've done a good job and uh, so it's it doesn't have to come from you it can just come from people around you right because sometimes mm-hmm. we have this uh, blind spot and we don't see what we are good at but others can because they are feeling the pain so that's another divine signal that yes yeah. this could be yeah, a possible book topic yeah it's it's funny because uh, i i i guess a lot of people probably watching or listening have probably never stopped for a moment to think about what are some of the things that I do get asked on a regular basis? What do people ask me for advice about? What do people ask me for insights on? And that's another, I love that because that's another great way of saying, okay, if I look back over the last couple of months or years, like there's, there's a recurring theme or themes that people keep asking my advice on. Therefore, they obviously value either, you know, what I have to say, how I say it, uh, the advice I give, et cetera. So I think that that's fantastic. <laughs> sure, yeah. So that's the second thing, um, John. The third divine signal uh, is a little different. It's something that makes you angry because there are a lot of <laughs> experts out there, the so-called experts, who are now uh, claiming to be experts and they're writing books, they are going on shows, they are making a lot of noise about a subject which you know that you know much more than them right? They are probably, they're just getting started out in their journey. They have a couple of years of experience, but they have claimed their authority and they are talking about it, which is fine. But you know, internally that, oh my God, this person, whatever he or she is saying, it's not scientifically correct. Uh, I have been doing this work for the last 30 years of my life, but what has been stopping me? So just because they have taken that extra step, the world is looking up to them as an expert, but you know that you could do a much better job. And sometimes you feel really angry and uh, you know, you just want to just, uh, you just have that bitter feeling because you feel that, Hey, I should be probably writing a book on this topic. But when that keeps coming to you and you watch a debate on TV and you feel that, Hey, I should be on that panel, right? (laughs) That's another signal that you should write a book on that topic. Yeah, and I think that's great because yeah, because I mean it is, and 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 absolutely no disrespect to the people who who you know put themselves out there and and develop a following. You know what they're doing is what they're doing is showing you the way. They're showing you right. what you should be doing, and and when you see that, and as you say, if you go, oh, I know more about this. I should be there. Well, guess what? They're they they're actually just challenging you to to come on, come on, follow the path I have. It's funny. I often say this to. I'm a big I, I I'm a big lover of modern art and you know and ex- modern postmodern expressionist art and all that. This stuff that mm-hmm. a lot of people drives a lot of people crazy. And when somebody ever you know points to a painting and says, ah, "Look at that! I could have done that," and I always go, <laughs> "Yeah, but you didn't." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So, so that, so that's great. So when somebody, okay, so say these three divine signals, this is, if somebody listening says, okay, absolutely. Uh, I have something that um, I'm, I'm going through now that I see other people are going through or that I think they could benefit from. It's, it's something that people kind of ask me, ask me about a lot. You know, I get asked for advice mm-hmm. on, and there's a lot of people out there talking about it who I don't think know as much about it or don't have the same insight as I have. So those three things come together. What's the next step in actually then actualizing this process? Yeah, great question. So the next step is to put all this together as a plan, because now you know that it's high time that you get into action mode. So a few things can be done, uh, John. One is to really define your purpose for writing the book, because Mm -hmm. you could be the best person to write about it. But unless there is a real why behind why you want to write the book, it's not going to make you up, uh, make you get up in the morning and put that that many hours of hard work every day. So the why has to be really strong. So just asking yourself, why should you write a book? Is it going to help you land more speaking opportunities? Is it going to make your mom proud? Or uh, is it just because you want to have some passive income on the side? Whatever be the reason. So people need to really be strong on their why. Um, And then it's important to finalize that book's topic because you may be an expert in weight loss, but there, there could be 10 different topics under weight loss that you could write about. So it's important to narrow down on the topic then 
come up with an outline for the book and then put a writing plan in place, like have a daily routine to write and have maintain a dashboard where you're actually tracking the progress that you're making on a daily basis. Have an accountability partner to hold you accountable. It will be great if that person is also writing their book so that way mm -hmm. you guys can uh, you know, be in touch. And I will just give, you, uh, give one big thing, which a lot of people don't do, but I tell all my students in my academy to do that, which is to design your book's cover. Get it designed through a professional because now you know your topic. So just craft a good title and subtitle, get the cover out and post it on social media. Just announce to the world that you're writing a book because that's a huge uh, kind of accountability to push yourself and make, you know, get it done. Yeah, no, I, I love that idea because, you know, there's, there's, nothing, um, there's nothing more motivating, if you like, or scary than if you do something like that and then people are saying, oh, uh, hey, so how's your book coming on? When's your book coming out? And you're sitting there going, oh, I got to start writing it quickly. Right. <laughs> so right. it's a great way of keeping you, of, of keeping you accountable um, by, by outsourcing that and having people, you know, because when people ask about it, when you put it out there, um, I think that's a great, I think that's a great idea. I think the the why, let's go back to the why for a moment, because I think that's mm -hmm. interesting too, because I think people have a lot of misconceptions about books, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, some people may think, okay, if I write a book, as you said, maybe I'll make good money out of it. Okay. Maybe. It's, it's a pretty tough road, but maybe, uh, yeah. uh, maybe it'll be something that gives, that gives me more validation. So therefore I get speaking opportunities. Maybe mm -hmm. I get consulting opportunities or maybe I'm doing it because it just, because it gives me pleasure and it will fulfill, you know, it'll fulfill, uh, fulfill the dream or whatever. But I think it's really important to understand those. Cause I think sometimes people think, uh, I'll write a book and then they just focus on maybe the money making part of it, which is, mm -hmm. as we know, which is the toughest part. Right. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So I think uh, the why uh, has to come from whom do you really want to help? I think mm -hmm. that can be a really powerful why. Of course, for the author, it can personally help you in so many ways. It can help you grow your business. It can give you more opportunities. That is great. But I think that's the side benefit. The real purpose, if it is uh, once you identify who the book is for and what is their problem that you're going to solve, that I think is a very uh, emotional thing and anything that's emotional, we want to act upon it, right? So I think mm -hmm. uh, if you could just write that like your mission statement for your book, I am writing so-and-so book to help my target reader, whoever that is, to overcome whatever problem or to achieve whatever result by this particular date, just write it, put it up on your wall and read that every day. I think that could be a good way to start your day and get yourself mm -hmm. into that writing zone. Yeah. And what's the second, what's the, what's that next step about actually starting to write? And, and would you, uh, would you recommend that somebody gets a coach, get somebody to work with them and help them? Because it, it seems like a fairly straightforward process, you know, sit down and just start writing. But, but it's as we've so seen, <laughs> yeah, yeah, as we've seen, uh, and as we know that uh, you can sit there for hours with your fingers hovering over the keypad <laughs> without actually hitting any keys. <laughs> Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so people have uh, different challenges when it comes to writing. Uh, some people are just uh, getting distracted when they want to start writing. So my suggestion would be just turn on the wi turn off the Wi-Fi and don't mm -hmm. do any research. Just focus on what you already know, because most people have 80% of their book already in their head. It's just the 20% of stuff that needs research and that can be done later. So if distraction is a problem, then ju just declutter your space and just off the turn off the Wi-Fi and just do the writing. But in spite of doing all of this, people still get stuck, right? So you could hire, uh, or I would say you could partner with different types of people. One could be a book coach. If you just need a person to validate your ideas, to uh, get on a call once a week with you to see what you've done and then uh, map out the steps for the next week. And if that uh, system, you, uh, do, if you think that would work for you because you're seeking the assistance of an mm -hmm. expert, that is one option to work with a book coach. Another uh, option could be to work with a writing assistant. Now this is for people who can write, but they feel that their quality of writing is not that good. So I have, uh, I've seen authors who write a chapter, then they bring on a writing assistant. Their assistant would improve upon the writing before it goes to an editor because an editor cannot rewrite every sentence, right? So you need a writing assistant to do that. And the third option, which is my favorite one, is to work with an angel writer. Now, this is for authors who just cannot 
write because either they are dyslexic or they don't have the time uh, mm -hmm. for whatever reason they don't want to sit on in front of the computer and write but they have all the knowledge up in their head so for these people uh, in fact that's one of the services we offer what we do is we assign a writer who's also a great interviewer just like you you know mm -hmm. asking all their great <laughs> questions so that way it's easier to bring out all the content from the author but before getting into the question and answer mode we actually first uh, structure the book we have the outline in place so we know exactly what are the points that are going to be discussed in a given call and the author can just come prepared but even if without any preparation most people already have it in their head so we just uh, interview them get all of that recorded and the writer goes back listens to the recordings and write the book for the author so that's angel writing so you could use any of these methods to get your book written yeah, so I mean, the, the bottom line is that if you feel you have a book and you feel like you have these divine messages and you feel you want to do it, there are multiple ways of achieving it. So it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be like those old movies where you're sitting there with a typewriter and a big stack of blank paper and in a, in a, right. in a cabin in the woods somewhere, you know, and, uh, and that's the only way you can do right. it. So there's lots of different ways of, of doing it, of doing it nowadays. So I think the other thing that I think when it comes to writing a book, uh, I think uh, regardless of which option you choose, I think time frames are important. It's important for people to understand how long a process this may be. So I know, I know every book is different, but just maybe you mm -hmm. could just give some insight into how long a process it is from start to finish. Yeah, I can give an ideal timeline, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, it completely depends on the author and uh, sure. what timeline they want to uh, give for themselves. I've seen authors write a book for years, but that does not make that a better book. Yeah. It's just that they were, you know, uh, they were not giving writing as their number one priority. And that could be the reason why it got delayed. But uh, authors who are really focused, I tell them that just give three months of your life to the book project and uh, spend the first two months in getting the book written. Uh, either you write it or take some assistance and get it written. Two months is good enough to write a 30,000 word book. So I've mm -hmm. seen so many of my students achieve that. They just spend an hour every day, but that is their holy hour for just writing. They don't do anything else. So with that discipline, it is possible to finish the book. After writing, the publishing process is pretty straightforward. And again, um, even if you're self-publishing it, don't try to do everything yourself because then the outcome is going to look very amateur so mm -hmm. i think it's good to just work with the professionals get a cover designer get an editor get a formatter to do the interior layout or just give it to a publishing agency like that's what we do right so we put uh, everything under one umbrella the authors don't have to go to 10 different people so by working with um, us we just make sure that all these publishing related tasks are finished in the next one or two months so in about uh, from the, if suppose somebody has to start the whole process today in about four months, they can actually have their book in their hand. So that could be an ideal timeline, especially for nonfiction books where it's about your expertise. Yeah, and I think the and I think the other part then is okay. So that's the time frame of writing the book. I think the other part that people sometimes don't understand is okay when the book is ready and the book is published. That's when that's when the work begins often for the author because it's not going yeah. to sell itself. It's not like Absolutely. the old days, you know, where you get a big, you know, a big time publisher and it puts it on a bookshelf in bookstores and people browse and it's on display. That there's a lot of hard work and basically the books that are successful are the ones where the authors work the hardest generally. Exactly, yeah. So Usually people ask me, you know, if I have to publish my book, how many copies will I sell a month? That's yeah. totally up to the author, right? Yeah, yeah. However great the topic may be, if you even write about COVID-19, it doesn't mean that it's just because it's a hot topic, it's going to sell. The author has to promote the book. And I think that is where the author should be ideally spending their time rather than trying to do their own covers on Canva. <laughs> so yeah. you know, that's where, that's where they should be focusing. So I look at marketing in two phases, uh, John. The first is the launch marketing where it's like the rocket which consumes the maximum fuel during takeoff. That is where you put in a lot of effort. So that begins from the time you actually design the cover. You post it on social media, you post it in your network and let people know that you're writing a book. So while you're writing the book, you're still building the buzz, you're creating a, com a, a community or at least a small group of people who are there to support you during the launch. And during the launch, market the book for the, the first month, do all the paid promotions and everything possible to make it hit the bestseller charts. But after that's done, that's just the initial spike. But you need to sustain that so that the book acts like 
you know, a, a marketing machine to get generate leads or however you want to use the book. So for that, again, you can do both organic uh, promotions as well as paid ones. So coming on podcasts is a great option if you know which podcast will have the right uh, yeah. audience. If it's your ideal target reader, you should be going on those kind of shows give a lot of value and at the end of it, talk about your book and some people will end up buying. So, but this needs to be done consistently. Maybe one, one interview every week, right? It may sound crazy, but there are a lot of authors who do that. And those are the ones who get those results. So going yeah. in front of the right audience is one. And secondly, you could also run Amazon ads, Facebook ads, and have a daily budget where people, whoever is looking for a similar topic or your competitor's book will end up also seeing your book because you actually chosen those keywords to promote your book as well. So yeah, these are some of the things that authors need to do consistently. And the more consistently they do it, the life of the book is going to be longer. Yeah, no, and I think that's, that's great. That's great advice. Because I think that's the thing that a lot of people fall down on. They don't realize that there's a huge amount of hard work on behalf of the author. And at the end of the day, uh, regard at the end of the day, who's going to care? Who's going to care most about your book? It's yourself, the author, right? right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it stands to reason that you'd be the one who put in the, the most work. Hey, listen, uh, Justin, this has been fantastic. Uh, you know, we're coming up against the end of our time here. Um, fascinating subject. Uh, I love, I love, I uh, hope everybody takes away and looks for those three divine signals and see if there's mm -hmm. out there, if the universe is calling for you to write a book, get started. Um, all of Jatsna's information will be below uh, this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yes, so I'm the founder of Happy Self Publishing. Uh, I'm also a best-selling author. So after I wrote my book, uh, Job Escape Plan, about five years ago, that's when I realized that a lot of others also wanted to publish their books. So I put Happy Self Publishing together. And I'm also a TEDx speaker. I love solo traveling. I'm a mom of two kids. And my husband is a relationship coach. And uh, yeah, I live in India. So that's a little bit about me. Yeah, that's fantastic. I would interest, very, very interesting. And so I would uh, encourage people, if you're thinking about, uh, if you're thinking about writing a book, check out Happy Self Publishing and all the advice that, that Jotsna can give to you. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all again soon. Thank you. Yeah.